Tennessee has clinched the SEC championship at the expense of my beloved friend, Brian Ralph's Gamecocks. Uh, this was a really impressive performance, in my opinion, from Tennessee. South Carolina did do their best to make things interesting late, and they hung around early in the first half as well. But uh, at a certain point, Tennessee had opened up a 14-point lead, I believe, was the biggest. Dalton Connect. Just an unstoppable offensive force that remained true, but Zakai Ziegler was much better this game than he was in the first 13 points, seven assists, and five rebounds. Uh, Brian, are you on the bandwagon with what seems like everyone in college basketball at this point that this Tennessee team could win a national championship? I don't know that they can win a national championship, but they can absolutely be the first Tennessee team to make the final. Um, this is something that we said way back in November when Dalton Connect was starting to come on the scene and and Ganey was making shots as well like those are the guys that make this team different Tennessee teams in the past have gotten bogged down by sluggish offensive stretches that inevitably would hit them and they didn't have guys who could get them out of it well I mean Dalton Connects consistently gotten them out of it all season long Ganey has stepped up at certain times Ziegler's really stepped up of late as well that's what's different about this team I, I see a scenario where they can win a national championship absolutely but for a Tennessee team that has not been in the Final Four, like that, that is the goal first and foremost. And this team can absolutely get there. I think the South Carolina game was a was a reminder of why, too, because defensively they were excellent. They kept South Carolina from getting any kind of rhythm for the first like 37 minutes of the game. That was just an awesome defensive performance. And then Connect had 26, wasn't super efficient, but wasn't inefficient either. Like had an okay game for him and he finished with 26 and was the most dominant player on the court as you mentioned Zeke were kind of stepped up and made made some big shots that was the the recipe for for how the Tennessee team can be successful against high level teams in March uh, and they can absolutely take that as far into the NCAA tournament as they want to yeah um the, we talked about tempo in the preview this game was played at South Carolina's pace as we anticipated that it would be uh and ultimately Tennessee was able to sort of I don't know, answer the questions of like, hey, is this going to really get to them the way it did the first time? Uh, I'm glad you you talked about Connect and his numbers because, you know, people see 26 points and they're like, ah, oh, what a killer. And then you can also flip it and be like, well, he took 23 shots. Nine for 23 isn't great. I just want to make the point, like to my eye watching him, um, it, I get like you, you want a guy to make 50, 60 percent of his shots, but like some of the shots he takes. Oh, to, yeah. To, to make nine of 23, it's like it, there's a reason Tennessee wants him taking 23 shots. They can live with yes. a nine for 23 night because of how good they are defensively and because of the the purposes the other guys on the floor serve. Like a Dalton Connect fadeaway is the best shot this team can get. And uh, I was just impressed, man. Like there, there's no other scorer like him in the country. There isn't. And, and that's not a knock on him saying like, oh, he wasn't 12 of 17 or – 16 and 23, like, this is a problem. I say that from the standpoint of, like, he was not incredible. Yeah. He was very good. He's what we come to expect. But it was a repeatable performance. It was yeah. not something where he, like, just simply couldn't miss. Now, he hit his first, I think, four threes in the game. I think it was four from four from three to start the game off, which certainly helps. But he he produced at a level that is normal, that is consistent. But I think this is a little bit below what we're – we've seen from him especially over the last month or so i think that that's where the confidence comes into play is because we know that he can at least do this time and time again and it wasn't a wasn't a bad performance by any stretch yeah no it wasn't it's just i don't know like there i watch much more limited teams here in big 10 country and it's like it's kind of the Tyson Walker, Michigan state thing. Like he'll take 21 shots, make seven. And it's like, Oh, was he cold? Like, no, this offense like needs him to do so much. Yes. that It was really impressive and connect. Like to me that it, this was like a rather quiet connect performance, which just speaks to his greatness when he still finishes with five made threes and 26 points. Um, South Carolina, you got Michi good Michi game. Oh, for seven from three stings, but uh, maybe a little variance there. He was eight for 12 from two outside of that. Were you happy with what you got offensively from guys? Do you think it was enough to maybe have won this game or is was the offense that let you down? I, the offense let South Carolina down. Uh, absolutely. Uh, defensively, they did more than enough to win this game. Um, there's a stat 
I forget who posted. I saw it on Twitter, and I apologize. I forgot who I saw it from. Um, but Tennessee has scored over 70 points against every SEC team they've played, except for twice, and it was both games against South Carolina. Like, I think that's a testament to the way this defense did perform against Tennessee. We just talked about Connect had a good game, obviously, but he didn't go off. I think at a, the way Connect had been playing, 223 shots, I think you could have expected a 30, 35 piece from him. Um, got 26, you made him relatively normal from an efficiency standpoint. You were able to – other guys stepped, stepped up and made plays. You were able to kind of disrupt Tennessee and, and limit what they did. They never really got into a complete, complete flow. But you couldn't capitalize on the other end. And it wasn't until the last three minutes of the game when South Carolina started really showing some urgency. And I, um, you could see a mindset of we're going to try and attack downhill and get to the paint no matter what, that they started coming back. Because there was a stretch where it went from a 12-point game to about a three-point game in a minute and a half. And it kind of felt like there was a chance South Carolina could steal that game. And I say steal in a big way because it never at any point in this game felt like South Carolina was in control. Never at any point in this game really felt like South Carolina was threatening to take control or, or, or to go up on Tennessee. But down the stretch, they got aggressive. They started making their threes. They were really cold other than that. And, you know, you're, this team is not going to win when they're not making threes with the way they play offense. Um, they got They waited too long to kind of get as aggressive as they really needed to be. It still almost worked, which is testament to their defense that had it in that position. Um, it's just too little too late. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where when you're a team that likes to limit possessions, that's great if you can get out to an early lead. It's not great if you're playing down from 14. Right. I'm, I'm not speaking like advanced analytics to anyone on this. You need to play quick when you're trying to come back. Uh, th- which I guess, honestly, as we project forward, right, it's going to make it so critical for Carolina, whoever they play in the NCAA tournament, like you've got to win the first 10 minutes. I, I Or at least, I mean, keep it within striking distance. This game was tied 10 minutes right. into this game, and then Tennessee kind of snowballed and got hot. But uh, Carolina is a team that certainly would be and you can, a good start. You can go back to the Florida game over the weekend because South Carolina was down double digits to the Gators in the second half as well. They made the switch to the 1-3-1 one zone, and it, it threw everything off and allowed the Gamecocks to come back. But that happened like halfway through the second. There was still a decent chunk of that game left. It wasn't like, all right, now it's desperation time. We're trying to make up the whole thing. They need to show that urgency a little bit more than they did in this game. Yeah, 100%. Um, I asked you this earlier in the season at one point, and we both laughed our butts off about it because the metrics have not loved this Carolina team at all. At a certain point, it felt like they were playing top 25-ish in the country. Uh, they remain in the 40s. They're 44th on Ken Palm after this loss to – or no, sorry, they're 47th after this loss to Tennessee. They dropped three spots. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's accurately reflective of how this team is playing and how good they are? No, I do not. Uh, you know, I'm not one who – thinks they are the best team in the SEC or even in the conversation of being the best team in the SEC. I think Tennessee, Kentucky are in a tier of their own. And I think, I don't even think South Carolina is necessarily on the same tier as Auburn and Alabama, but I do think South Carolina is a top 25 team in the country. What they've done on the court reflects that. And we talked going into this game too, you had, um, I think it was Purdue, Houston, and UConn that had like three losses. And then the next team was South Carolina in terms of fuse losses, and they added this one onto it, obviously. But, like, this has been a season-long thing from them. This is not just a recent surge in conference play. They took care of business in non-com, and they didn't play a, a super strong non-conference schedule, but beat some good teams, beat some quality teams. Only loss was to Clemson. No shame in that. Get into SEC play. You do lay a dud in the Georgia loss, and that's coming back to bite them a little bit, I think. But you got the Tennessee win. You got the Kentucky win. You handled business against everybody else. This is a solid team. It's not a team that's going to threaten to make a Final Four run, and I'll gladly be clipped if they end up coming back and making a Final Four, and I'll gladly be clipped. They're not a team that can do that, but like, this is a team that should win a first-round game, can win a first-round game, and potentially challenge for a Sweet 16 berth, depending on who pops up in their region, in their little mini pot in their bracket. They are matchup dependent. There's some of that that comes into play here. But at some point, we need to give more credit to what's actually done on the court as opposed to just looking at some uh, pretty bad, I would say, analytical metrics. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's 100% fair. Uh, and I, on the point of being matchup dependent, 
I think there's a lot of teams that are matchup dependent. Like that, don't take that as a slight against yeah. South Carolina, right? Like outside no, I mean, of the top five, I think everyone's matchup yeah. dependent this year. So yeah, uh, unless you're again Purdue, UConn, or Houston, everybody yeah. has at least one pretty major flaw. Yeah, hundred percent, very true. Um, ooh, how do I want to ask this? Uh, Tennessee. Do they deserve the fourth one seed? It's them in Arizona. It, let's say hypothetically they win against Kentucky the final game of the season. Mm-hmm. That would be – how many straight would they have at that point? Eight straight wins to end the year. Uh, I guess we got to wait and see what happens in the SEC tournament at that point, but they'd be 25-6 and six to end the regular season with an outright SEC championship by a couple games, wins over Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina, and Kentucky in back-to-back-to-back-to-back games. Uh, would you say they deserve to be on the one line or would they be on the two line behind Arizona? I would have them on the one line. Uh, I think Tennessee, what they've done over the last two months in conference play is more impressive than what Arizona has done. I like Tennessee more as a team right now than I do Arizona. I wouldn't be surprised if either of them made the final four, but I think Tennessee has a better resume. I think they're playing better, just an eye test as well. However, I don't know if it's really going to matter because if they both take care of business, those be the one and two seed in the West. I don't think Arizona will care if they're the one seed or the two seed. At that point, it doesn't matter who wears the home whites if they play in the Elite Eight. So I would give the Tennessee, but ultimately think that if it comes down to these two teams, conversation is not really going to matter that much. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Um, in a hypothetical Tennessee Arizona matchup, do you trust Tennessee more? Yes. I do too. Uh, that's where you're I'm taking, at. You're, you're taking shot chucking Dalton Connect against shot chucking Caleb Love. I love how you put that. And uh, yeah, I a hundred times out of a hundred, give me Tennessee. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Dalton connect. We did a video on our channel. I think it was just Carter and I on uh, the whole national player of the year, Dalton connect dialogue last week. I thought it was foolish because the, like, Zach Eady is alone. Like I, I don't care who yes. else you want to put. It's Zach Eady and it's alone. Let's say Zach Eady was ruled ineligible for this award. Is Dalton Connect the national player of the year? Yes, he is the number two. Like he is, I think I've said it a number of times on air, he is the non Zach Eady national player of the year. And I think you have to have that category to have a conversation because the national player of the year is not a conversation. It is Zach Eady. It's always been Zach Eady. There's nothing he has done to open the door. Everything he has done this season really closes the door even more. It's not a conversation. But yep. Dalton Connect, I think any other year or most years where there's not this dominant force would have been a national player of the year, right? Like in the OB Toppin year, I think Dalton Connect wins over OB Toppin. He probably wins it over Oscar Shibwe. Probably wins it over Luke Garza, right? You go back through the last couple of years, this Dalton Connect season is special. It just happens to be at the same time that there's the most dominant force we've seen in recent memory. Yep. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately you can't create a new category, but if we could, I would agree with you. Uh, he's just so fun to watch. I really have a lot of respect for him. And, uh, I think the, my, my words of encouragement to everyone from the Tennessee side would be, don't make this about Zach Eady versus Dalton connect. It doesn't matter. And trying to discredit who Zach Eady is because you're a fan of Dalton connect is not the move. It's not a good look. Both these players are extremely special for extremely unique reasons. And uh, I've just enjoyed watching them both. Edie's the national player of the year, but Dalton connects a bona fide first team, all American who might be the most singularly important offensive player in the sport. And if he keeps playing like this, you might make a final four. You might win a national championship. My final question to end on with this for is uh, sec related your game Cox. Do they lose in the NCAA tournament before any of the elites do? So I'll call the elites, Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky yes. and Auburn. They, one of those are leads to lose before South Carolina's. It's going to be Alabama or Auburn. Okay. I was hoping you'd go there. I wasn't sure you'd be brash yeah. enough for it, but I like it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And it may just be the fact that Auburn and, or Alabama play on Thursday and South Carolina plays on Friday. It may be that, but South Carolina will not be the only one of those top five that loses early. Yeah. Okay. I love it. A uh, little teaser for what to expect from Brian Ralph next week. We are going to be doing previews and recaps for every single big game of conference tournament week, as we've been doing all season long. Uh, Brian Ralph is going to be in charge of the SEC conference for us on this channel. So we're very excited for that. 
Can't wait. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Brian, for being here. If you've been watching the Sleepers channel this year, you know that we love to bet on college basketball. And as March Madness approaches, it's only heating up at my bookie. Our exclusive partners here at the Sleepers Media channel. Turn your basketball knowledge and skill into wins at my bookie, where every single shot, every spin, every bet opens the door to a payday. Whether you're backing your favorite college basketball team or seeking the thrill of a casino win, my bookie provides a world-class betting experience. Secure a 50% bonus on your first deposit with promo code SLEEPERS. That's promo code S-L-E-E-P-E-R-S. I don't know why I just spelled that out for you. You know how to spell. Experience the thrill of backing your favorite team, hundreds of player props, and more. That's promo code SLEEPERS. Bet with us. Bet with my bookie.